السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر إن الحمد لله نحمده تعالى ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله صلى الله عليه وسلم يا أيها الذين آمنوا تبوا الله حق توقاته ولا تموتن ولا تموتن إلا وأنتم مسلمون يا أيها الناس تبوا ربكم الذي خلقكم من نفس واحدة 
وخلق منها زوجها وبث منهما رجالا كثيرا ونساء واتقوا الله الذي تساءلون به والأرحام إن الله كان عليكم رقيبا يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله وقولوا قولا سديدا يصلح لكم أعمالكم ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم ومن يتع الله ورسوله فقد فاز فوزا عظيما أما بعد فإن أصدق الكلام كلام الله وخير الهدي هدي محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وشر الأمور محدثاتها وكل محدثة بدعة وكل بدعة ضلالة وكل ضلالة في النار ثم أما بعد I commence, beloved brothers and sisters, in the name of Allah Azza wa Jal, I send salutations of prayers and peace upon the finality of prophets and messengers, Muhammad ibn Abdullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, upon his family, his companions, and all who follow him in righteousness until the day of judgment. Beloved brothers and sisters, Today, we want to look at the concept of love. And how do we understand this word that so many human beings are seeking and searching for? Ibn Qayyum, he says, Rahimullah Ta'ala, the upper and the lower realms of the heavens and the earth were created with love and love for it. And the movement of the celestial bodies, the sun, the moon, the planets, the angels, the animals, and the movement of every mover is because of love. Dr. Ali explained, Allah Tabaraka wa Ta'ala has created everything, including us, because of love with it and love for it. Everything that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does, He does out of complete love. Ibn Qayyim, he went on to say that worship is the utmost type of love and it is coupled with the utmost type of humility to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And love has humbled a lover and made the lover, the one who loves, submissive to the one who is being loved. It is stated that the one who truly loves Allah is only that believer who truly is submissive to the commands of Allah. Those who stay away from His prohibitions and those who try to do what will earn them the love of Allah Taala. wa ta'ala. For how can we say that we love Allah Jalla wa Ala, but yet we are not proving our love to Allah Subhanahu wa Taala through the things previously mentioned? Allah has proven His love to us, has He not? He continues to provide for us, has He not? He continues to allow us to exist and to have all that we want even though we may not be deserving of that which He is providing for us. Yet Allah does not reject us. Yet He does not push us away. Rather He continues to provide us with light and guidance due to the love that He subhanahu wa ta'ala has for his creation and his, and his slaves. But we are the ones who turn away from the immense love that Allah Tabaraka wa Ta'ala provides and continues to give. And he continues to give that love even though we may be defective in our own love. Remember that loving is when one gives and receives. If you only consider yourself to be the recipient of love, 
and do not like to be the distributor or the giver of it, then they say you are considered to be a person who is selfish and stingy. No person wants to be with a person who does not reciprocate love back to them. Why would our Lord subhanahu wa ta'ala, the one who is the most loving, the most kind, the most generous, be any different in that regard? Ibn Qayyim, he says, worship is love and glorification. He said, when we understand the boundless glory of the Creator, we love Him. And based on that, we lovingly surrender to Him. He says, love is an essential ingredient for the slave of Allah. Worshipping Allah without love is not worship at all. Love of Allah is the very thing that drives us to worship Him. Love is the very thing that makes us fall upon our faces in prostration, crying, weeping, humbly asking Him to love us back. Because if we are the recipients of His love, then that means we will be the recipients of His kindness, His mercy, His forgiveness, His pardoning, and everything else that we are so desperately in need of when it comes to our relationship with Him subhanahu wa ta'ala. Ibn Qayyim, he also said, worship is comprised of two principles. Utmost love combined with utmost humility and submission. So if you love someone, but you do not submit to him, you are not worshiping him, subhanahu. And if you are submitted to someone without love, Ibn Qayyim says you are not worshiping him until you love and you both and couple did that submit. The Shaykh, he says, and this is why it is not considered worship if you are strong-armed, forced into submission. It must happen willingly and be done out of love that is coming directly from you. Allah does not want to force anyone to love Him. SubhanAllah. He makes this complete, He makes this a complete choice for the believer. And Allah Tabaraka wa Ta'ala as the just king who he is. He doesn't force his subject to love him. He doesn't force his subjects to obey him. He doesn't force his subjects to submit to him. Rather, he makes this an absolute choice. But he does inform us that at the end of it all, at the end of life, in that moment that everyone will reach, that if your choice was not to love Allah, if your choice was not to demonstrate that love to Allah Tabaraka wa Ta'ala, then you yourself have rejected the love of Allah Subhanahu wa Ta'ala because your very existence is because of Him. Beloved brothers and sisters, when we look at love, we look at it in the sense of human beings. We understand love through the dynamic of human beings. The way we love our parents. It is an undying type of love. That a lot of us, when we lose them, we don't know what to do. The love that we have for our children. The love that we have for our spouses. The love that we have for our families and the like. But why is there not a stronger love for the one Allah who has given them all to you, who has brought you to life? We should be loving Him subhanahu wa ta'ala more than anything on the face of this earth. Dr. Ali, he stated that when love is misdirected, this love leads to shirk and sin. Ibn Qayyim, he says, that know that the most useful type of love and the most obligatory, the highest and the most beneficial love is the one whose hearts were created with his love for him and in them. And the creation was made possessing the fitrah of worshiping him 
or loving Him only. He says, it is because of it that loving Allah that the heavens and the earth came into existence. And all creatures have it in their nature to love Allah tabaraka wa ta'ala. It is the secret, he says, of La ilaha illallah. For the meaning of ilah is the one who attracts the hearts or supremely resides over the hearts with love, majesty, exaltation, humility, submission, and worship. And to him alone does all worship belong. And he says, worship is complete love and it consists of complete submission and humility. And he says, Dr. Ali, he says, this is why the early Muslims absorbed this love and exemplified this love in their traits, in their characteristics. It was because of this love that they truly had for Allah tabaraka wa ta'ala that they were able to make a transformation that was so incredible, that they were able to be from the best of generations. It was due to this immense love for Allah that they were able to leave everything behind and to remain with absolutely nothing. Many left family, friends, homes, furniture, wealth, animals, land, etc. All to prove to Allah that they truly loved Him subhanahu wa ta'ala more than anything on the face of the earth. Because they understood that everything that they had, that they gave up from for Allah, came from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Beloved brothers and sisters, and because they understood this, they understood that these blessings could only be present because of Allah, and naturally, the one whom they love more than anything else will always continue to take care of them if they sacrifice all that they had for his sake. He goes on to say that the second factor in this love is that the love gap has been widened in our day and time. He says, because the gap between the revealed versus the Qur'an the sunnah, the guidance, and the reality was the contact with other civilizations and with other religious communities. He says their alternate views and traditions were adopted by the Muslims, unfortunately. At the time of the companions, that love was pure. That love was sincere. As time went on and we began to mix and we began to combine ourselves, and we began to migrate into new lands. Little by little, the Muslims began to adopt traditions that were not their own. And he says, and this happened especially or specifically as the Qur'an and the Sunnah became weaker within the Muslim community and the Muslim Ummah. He says, hence, external exaggerations met internal ones and were accelerated and accelerated the decline of this love for Allah. And he says, without the love, certain corners of Islamic studies and teachings felt soulless and empty. SubhanAllah. And he goes on to mention how these exaggerations began to happen. That many of us stood away from that love that is supposed to be found in spirituality. That love that is supposed to connect us to Allah. Many began to focus on the issues of fiqh. They began to focus on the issues of aqidah. Issues that are supposed to bring you to that spiritual point of love. But they began to deny that aspect of that spirituality that love is supposed to encompass. He said, while well, yet others went to the other extreme. And they said to the point that they loved Allah tabaraka wa ta'ala so much and they were going to demonstrate their, their love to Allah to such an extent that they would be able to unify with Allah here on this earth. So we see 
that there was a lack of balance within the ummah and because of that we see the opposite extremes of this love that was not present during the time of the companions so he says we have lacked the balance needed and because of this many are suffering many are not loving the creator and wallahi this is true many are suffering and many are not loving the Creator. We really have to ask ourselves that question. How many of us really love the Creator? Because if we say we truly, really, indeed, with all of our heart, soul, and mind love the Creator, then we have to begin to question some of our actions and practices, our arrogance, our lack thereof, our negligence, and the like. He also says, which is unfortunate, that many feel that the Creator does not love them. And all of this has caused a windstorm within the hearts, minds, and souls of human beings. He says we must bring back the balance and ensure that our spirituality has a balance of love that was found during the life of Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and his companions. May Allah be pleased with all of them. He says, because of love, love to many justifies all of our life choices. Is this not true? Love to many justifies all of our life choices. People move across the world for love, do they not? He says, if love is all good, then any two people, or in, in, within any two people, then that love cannot be denied. He says, you see the idea of your soulmates, who makes your life complete and worthwhile, when you were looking for that spouse, that husband, that wife. He says, but since humans have removed the concept of divine love as an option in their lives, the soulmate has replaced this divine love. And the soulmate is the one who receives our absolute and undivided attention. Finding the soulmate has become the pursuit of our life and it's our meaning and fulfillment. He said, but this type of love in the past was previously reserved only for Allah Jalla wa'ala. Subhanallah. And is this not true? How many things we do and we change for the one whom we love. You've changed things, brothers, in your life because of your wife. Sisters, you've changed things in your life because of your husband. You've changed things in your life because of your children. You've changed things in your life because of your parents. But when you are asked to change things in your life, because of Allah Jalla wa'ala, we begin to question and ask why. Is there a need? Do I have to? We want to find the shortcuts. We want to find an escape route. But for another human being to love us, we're willing to go to the end of the world, sacrificing and struggling and toiling. We'll do whatever we have to do for our children, is it not? But for Allah, how is that love? And how is our sacrifice? And how is our toiling? And how is our commitment? And how is our dedication and willingness to do the same that we do for other human beings? Beloved brothers and sisters, he says, we have moved away from really loving the Creator, and we have headed down a path that we all, all we seek is to love other human beings, and for them to love us. And we put all of our chips on the table with this love. We are willing to do whatever it takes to find it, climb mountains, traverse valleys, and go through all types of difficulty. We have failed to realize that we have been receiving this love all of our lives. We have failed to realize that Allah has been giving us that love all of our lives. But we have been so blinded by the temporary 
and the incomplete type of love that comes from another human being, that this has driven us away from basking and enjoying the delight of true love, and that is the love of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that is the greatest type of love. أقول قولي هذا وأستغفر الله لي ولكم فاستغفروه فإنه هو الغفور الرحيم Bismillah wa salatu wa salamu ala Rasulillah wa ala alihi wa ashabihi wa man tamasaka bi sunnatihi ila yawm al-deen amma ba'd The Shaykh, he ends this particular part of the dialogue and analyzing with what Ibn Qayyum was saying by stating when we understand Islam more profoundly, when we understand Islam more profoundly, we will learn what true love really is. He says we need this type of love. Now more than ever in the world, we need this type of love now more than ever in the world. The world needs it and the world needs you to share this type of love with it. And beloved brothers and sisters, Wallahi, I hope that this can be a reanalyzation of ourselves, of our commitments, of what we are really seeking to have. Because the reality is that life, subhanahu wa rabbil azim, is temporary. The reality is that that love that we seek, that we seek to have in our lives from other human beings, that love in many instances is temporary. That love in many instances is failed. That love in many instances doesn't meet the desire in our hearts that we are trying to fulfill. But if we turn to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and we allow him to continue to embrace us with his love. And we recognize the bounties that he continuously provides us with. And we recognize the opportunities that he is giving us so that we can love him and so that he can love us. We would realize the transformation that we also can make in the world no different than the transformation that the companions made during the time and after the time of the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam through that love, because of that love, and due to that love. Rabbana atina fi dunya hasana wa fi al-akhirati hasana wa qina ala al-nar We ask you, Ya Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala, make us from those whom you love. We ask you, Jalla wa ala, Allow us to prove our love to you, Ya Allah. Allow us to seek your love, Ya Allah, Tabaraka wa Ta'ala, to sacrifice for your love, Ya Allah, to show you our commitment, our dedication, our sacrifice, Ya Allah, our willingness to give whatever it is that we have to do, Ya Allah, to prove that we truly indeed are in love with you in hopes that you are completely in love with us and that we will benefit from that love in this life and more importantly in the next. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless our brother Sheikh Muhammad Sharif who passed away yesterday in Dubai. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give him Jannat and Firdaus al-A'la. May Allah forgive him all of his sins and shortcomings. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allow his legacy that he has established of Al-Maghrib Institute here on this earth to be something that continues to give and provide for him until the day he meets Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept from him all of his good deeds 
and make them heavy on the scale Yom al May Allah be there for his family during this time of loss for his wife and his children. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allow us to benefit from those brothers and sisters who have left legacies here on this earth, showing and proving their love to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And we ask, Ya Allah, allow that to be the case for our brother, Shaykh Muhammad Sharif. Ameen. Fa'aqeemu salam.